If it ain't broke, don't fix it to supersize your business. As you can see, on this amazing magnifying glass, which I use almost every day, the little button fell off to turn the light on. I don't need the light all the time, but sometimes I do. But it reminds me that it's good enough. It still magnifies. It still does what I need it to do 99% of the time. And if I'm in the dark and I need a flashlight, guess what? I can use my phone. But I love this expression. It's actually not, it's, it's not... The origin of it is probably back to the Stone Age when they re when they invented the wheel and, and began inventing things when humanity did. But it's actually not attributed or documented in its present form, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, until 1977. Well, I was a teenager in 1977. So to me, this particular expression has been pretty much a part of my life, my everyday life and, and my philosophy and a lot of us in my generation and beyond have adopted the if it's not broken leave it alone philosophy now this one came from a member of the jimmy carter administration by the name of bert lance he was actually the director of the office of management and budget i think and in 1977 he had an article published in may in the national business publication and he basically said you know he could save the government billions of dollars if they would just adopt one simple motto. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he goes on to say, fixing things that aren't broken and then not fixing things that are broken, if they would just do that, they would save billions and billions of dollars. Isn't that just so true today? Boy, we're seeing that as we transition uh, in the United States and, and policies that were for the people are being reversed because of political statements, not because it's the right thing, not because it's broken, not because it's bad for the American people, but because we just wanna change things for the sake of changing things. You know, personal development, those of us that love personal development, continuous improvement, lifelong learning. And I come from a quality background, so process improvement and continuous improvement are just kind of ingrained in my being. I believe that there's always a faster, easier, more efficient, more effective way of doing pretty much anything that we want to do or endeavor. We just haven't figured it out yet. But at what point do we say, this is a good enough process, this is sufficient, and other things are more important and a higher priority? I hope we do it on a regular basis and that whenever we're looking at a situation, we're focusing on the real root cause of the problem, not just the symptoms of a problem. So often, and all of us are guilty of this, we focus on the symptoms and not on the actual cause. You know, we do it in medicine, we do it in diagnosis, we do it in uh, every field imaginable and in our everyday lives and our relationships as well as in our businesses. We focus on things that really aren't the most important critical piece of the puzzle to be solving at any given time. So how do we do this? How do we make sure that it, if it ain't broke, we don't fix it and that we do fix the things that truly are broken? Well, I like to do audits and, and challenges and I look at results. Are the results moving me in the direction I wanna go for my business or not? If they are, and we've got a process in place that's working and continuing to give us better and better results, we leave that process alone. Because guess what? In all of our organizations and all of our lives, there's plenty of things that are broken or that do need our attention. So we want to identify what's working and then leave that alone, actually celebrate and be grateful and happy and excited and delighted and award and reward the people that have things that are working and then focus on the real problems that and the real the real levers that we can turn in our businesses and in our life that will make a huge difference that will actually jettapult us catapult us to the results that we want in different areas. Uh, we want to make sure that we're looking for momentum and progress. And if we've got momentum going and progress, we want to leave the things that are working alone and add to them, do more of them perhaps, but we don't want to change them just for the sake of changing them. Uh, we want to increase the positive results we're getting and decrease the negative results we're getting, right? Kind of seems sensible, but we don't always behave that way. Sometimes we undermine ourselves and make, make mistakes by fixing things that aren't broken and then things that are broken, totally ignoring and not even seeing. It's a whole lot of stuff in all of our lives that is in need of our attention, right? A lot of times our habits, our day-to-day -day habits, our, uh, our processes, and, and that's why I always do an annual process review of all of my, my business processes and my personal processes, incidentally, and habits, to make sure that I am not missing things. And every year, guess what? 
I find some big, fat, hairy, ugly thing or process or habit that's snuck into my life or that's come right into my life because I've let it in that I need to stop, adjust, and change because it is broken. So focus your energy on the things that really deserve and require your energy. Fix them and move on. Fix them, put a process in place, and move on. And, and you know, it's a, it's a cycle, right? It's the continuous improvement cycle is a cycle of always finding the things to work on and working on those, making sure that we're prioritizing our attention and getting the results that we want. So I'd love to know your experience with this particular idiom and expression and proverb, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Are you a perfectionist and a fixer? Because at some point, there's always a break even point, right? Where the amount of effort we're putting into something and the results that we're getting out of it, there's an optimal point. And then after that point, we can put more and more and more effort into it, but we're getting a diminishing return on our results and on our effort and our energy. So we just, we don't want to be doing that. We want to get the most out of our business and out of our life. All right, have an awesome day. I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom, working on Proverbs and uh, what it means, where it came from, and how you might use it in your business right now. Love to hear your stories about how you're using it. Take care and catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.